Hello, I'm Miss Mora, your guide for today's mini lesson on radiation. Radiation has many everyday uses. For example, it can be used to sterilise hospital equipment, take photos of broken bones, and even help tell us the age of the earth. Today, we will be looking at how scientists save lives, or how fire alarm works, focusing on radiation and the ionising chamber inside the alarm. I prefer to call them smoke alarms because it's the smoke that they detect that makes them <coughs> To understand what's happening in this little box we first need to know a thing or two about, you guessed it, radiation. Here we go. We can think of radiation as a type of energy that is released in the form of waves or particles. Ionising radiation can be from waves in the electromagnetic spectrum, ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma waves, or particles, beta and alpha. In fire alarms, alpha particles are what do all the hard work. They ionise the air. Can you tell us what ionise means, please, miss? I'm glad you asked. The air, just like any other material with a mass, is made up of atoms. In the centre of an atom, its nucleus, we have protons and neutrons. Around the outside, we have electrons. If a high energy particle or wave were to hit into an atom, it would bash into the electrons around the outside, knocking one of them out. This ionisation process would leave us with two parts. One, the ion, a positively charged particle because an electron has been removed from it. The other part would be a free electron. Ha ha, e escapado. This free electron is our negative charge. We'll need to remember that for later, but for now, show and tell time. The outside of a fire alarm has metal casing with holes to allow any smoke or air in the room to get through. Inside we have three main parts we're going to focus on. In this nice diagram we're going to label the battery with positive and negative terminals, the alarm siren that makes the noise if smoke is detected and the most important part, the ionising chamber. This has three parts to it top metal plate, a bottom metal plate, and an alpha source. A full circuit is made from the positive terminal to the top metal plate, through the air, and from the bottom metal plate to the negative terminal. We will now zoom in to the ionising chamber, the top positive plate, the bottom negative plate, and the alpha source. Air is between these two plates. Normally, electricity can't flow through the air because it's not a conductor. This air is special because it's next to an alpha source, a tiny speck of the element americium-241. Many alpha particles will be released from the source, hit air molecules and ionise them. The ionised air molecule is positive. The electron, the negative part, is attracted to the positive top plate because opposites attract just like the north and south poles on a magnet. Together, the ions and electrons form a bridge between the plates that allows electricity to flow. So, most of the time, an electric current is flowing through the circuit. But, if any smoke gets near the alarm, it drifts into the chamber and fills the space between the plates. This blocks the flow of electrons to the top plate and that reduces the electric current in the circuit. The alarm detects this drop and because less current means smoke, sounds the alarm. Thanks goes to Hatch End High School Science Department, Katie and Andrea at the Science Learning Centre and Malcolm Pascod, without whose help none of this would have been possible. <laughs>